throttle, prop, condition lever, or fuel shutoff. Generally, throttle is back against the beta gate. Uh -huh. You lift and pull back to get into beta. Okay. okay. Prop back here is feather. Full forward is fine pitch. Anything in between, you're actually controlling the pitch of the prop when in the forward mode. Okay. Back here, fuel shutoff. Okay. This will be kind of the normal position when the when everything is at rest. Okay. <clears throat> Before you do a start, this is always step one, is make sure that the throttle lever is full back. Let's talk about the controls, okay? Um, we have a master. What we'll do is we'll turn on the master. We're gonna take a look at the gauges in general to see that everything is reasonable, okay? ITT should closely approximate ambient prior to start, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, fuel pressure, I'm sorry, oil temp, you can see we're down at 80. Maximum uh, recommended temperature for the oil is over 100 for normal operations. And our oil cooler is so effective that we can actually see during a full power run that we can keep the temps below 100. And you do this in Fahrenheit? Uh, yes. And well, you can set up your gauges to do to operate however you want. We supply the data, and you can set up the uh, MVP50 to either re uh, report in Fahrenheit or or uh, Celsius. Mm -hmm. We actually look at the ITT in Celsius, but we actually look at oil pressure and everything else in uh, in SAE measurements. Okay. Okay. Um, so we've got. Uh, 80 degrees on the oil temp, which is probably okay because the thing was sitting inside while it was cool. It hasn't heat soaked yet. And what we're looking for at this point is zero oil pressure. Okay, N2 RPM is the propeller. We're going to be at zero. Uh, RPMs for N1 is delivered in percent. Okay, and so obviously not running a zero. Mm -hmm. When you get it to full power, the maximum allowable is 101.5 percent. Um, there are limitations that's all in here. You don't want to run it at more than 101.5% uh, ever, okay? Mm -hmm. um, you can run it up to there uh, and from 100%, I think, up to 101.5 for um, a minute to get initial power. Um, if you look at all of, the, oh, and the other thing is the ITT for max power, you no more than 710 for a minute continuous no more than 690. We recommend to all of our customers run this thing and use 660 as your personal red line. Okay? Mm -hmm. At 660 you're 50 degrees below the factory recommended red line. You're still going to be making 650 plus horsepower. Okay? Um, which is in general more than enough to get the job done. Um, and you've got a 50 degree cushion that should you really need more power, you've got 50 degrees before you even hit what they consider the red line. Yes. Most people operate very simply at that up to 660, okay? okay. Mm -hmm. Torque, we look at torque on a PSI basis, okay? Um, and for the M601D engine to reach 100% torque, we're gonna be looking for 127 PSI. Most people, when they're flying, they're gonna look at torque as, again, a percentage. And so what happens is inside the MVP50, it has the little conversion module that'll take your PSI and convert it down to percent. So you can always start, and let's face it, with a, with a pilot, with an operator, whatever it is he gets used to is gonna work just fine. So if you wanna fly with percent or if you wanna fly with a, a PSI for torque, whatever is the choice is, is approved. Mm -hmm. um, so what we look for for uh, full power is 128, 127 to 128% or 128 PSI. Um, and in cruise, what I want to do is get about 115 to 117. And the trick in cruise, what I find in general, okay, is if I'm doing, if I'm at full power and I'm making a 100% torque, I'm at 128 PSI, this is going to be where it's got to be, this is going to be where it's got to be. Uh, N2 RPM, red line's at 2080. I try to keep it uh, 2050 or below, okay? Mm -hmm. um, so now here I am, I'm at full power. I wanna get to cruise. What I do is I pull back the throttle until I bring this down to about 105 PSI, okay? From there, as I increase the pitch of the propeller from fine pitch, as I pull it back to course in the blades, what happens is torque starts to rise. <coughs> By the time I achieve 116 PSI of torque, 
my N2 RPM will be at 1800, which is perfect for cruise. And so what happens is you're going to determine what the best number is for cruise based on your altitude and so on and so forth. It may need to be 1850 or it might need to be 1900 or some other number. But in general, if you discover, uh, if you discover what the magic number is to pull back from full power to achieve a cruise setting, just by pulling in the prop, you'll have the torque come up and have it wind up being in the in the place that it needs to be. Mm -hmm. um, you can actually think of this as like manifold pressure. You know, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, what you're measuring when you're when you're setting the power on a reset. Okay. All right. So we've got all of our normal settings. I've got over 25 volts over here. We're in discharge because obviously we're not making power. Mm -hmm. um, what we've got is a tester here for, you'll have one of these to test the, the, the uh, exciters. Right. We can test the right, we can test the left. Okay. It's one of the reasons we like the new one. It's very consistent, okay? Mm -hmm. This turns on the fuel pumps and at which point we'd get fuel pressure. This over here, um, this gauge actually measures total gallons and then we can also look at fuel flow. Now, uh, at this point, there's obviously no fuel, no fuel flowing, but when, when we actually get into operation, we'll be watching fuel flow as one of our standards, okay? The start switch up gets the start module going, okay? And that causes ignition events and so on. Down is actually a cold cycle. So if I pull this into the down position, what happens, it spins. It changes the temps in here, but it has no effect on ignition, okay? Now, every time I do a first start on an engine, I do uh, what we call an isolate start, okay? And basically what happens is we're, I put the master on, I turn on the fuel pumps. This is the isolate switch. When I put this in this position, it disables this lever, okay? this lever is now in control, mm. okay? Mm -hmm. The condition lever becomes your controller. So what I would do, now that I'm in isolate, I'd go to start. When I get up to about seven to 10 percent, I go ahead and I put the throttle, I got a little mark over here where the idle detent would normally be. Right. Here's one of the problems. With 30 feet of cable, when that arm goes past that little ball, you can't feel it here, uh, okay? Uh, uh. So what we do is we make a little mark. Now, on your throttle quadrant, there's actually going to be an interlock. A, did it, a detent? A detent, right. So when you move it forward, it'll, it'll engage, the detent will engage once you, get to, uh, once you get to the idle position. You can't pull it back. Anything forward of there would be throttle, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. To shut it off, you lift the detent, pull it back, that gets you in the off position, okay? So now what would happen is it's spinning up, I go ahead and I add throttle until it lights off. As soon as it lights off, I back this off about, oh, let's say 20, 20 degrees of motion, 30 degrees of motion, okay? And the idea is, is if I leave it here, it's gonna deliver too much, too much. fuel, okay? So I pull this down and I wait for the ITT to stabilize. Mm -hmm. The place where you are most likely to have an over temp situation is immediately after start because the least amount of air is flowing through the engine and the FCU and the start module are now trying to provide the proper amount of fuel for the amount of air that's coming through. As this thing spins up, more and more air gets through, the signal that goes to the start module starts telling it, oh, here we go, now we got some air to measure. It kind of levels out once after it started and it makes it to 15 or 18 percent. And from there on, generally, you can watch the ITTs pretty much decrease, okay? Until at the end of start, by the time you're up and running at 60 percent, you'll probably be in the mid fives, okay? In the start, generally what we'll see is this will get up to the low sixes to the mid sixes. And after that, we really want to keep an eye because if it starts speeding away, we're going to want to pull the condition lever. This over here is the EHT, okay? And if I turn, if I push the EHT button, you can see I get an EHT indicator, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. This says I'm limiting fuel. So what happens is as it's spinning up, I can push this button, limit the amount of fuel, let, let it slow back down, let it go again. In generally, the use of the EHT happens in about a half a second burst. Because what you don't want to do is 
have the compressor turbine spin up and then spin back down and then have to spin up. All you want to do is arrest it and then let it keep going. So tiny bursts of the EHT generally do the job, okay? So what we're gonna do here is our, like I said, our first start. And the reason, the reason that I do the first start always in the isolate mode is if, a, if an FCU has been sitting around for a while and it's just been bled and it's the first time it's being put into use, mm -hmm. I don't know exactly how it's, you know, what it's gonna do, are there any surprises? I'd rather find out getting the engine started, having it running, being in control myself, then turn control of the engine over to the FCU and now check it out and make sure that everything is fine. Once everything, because I have seen, we'll go ahead and we'll start it in isolate. We shut, shut off the isolate mode, and next thing you know. Runs away. Um, well, no, you shut it and the engine dies. Oh, okay. Right. It's because somewhere in there, there was an air bubble and it hasn't worked its way, even though we bled the system, okay? Somewhere in there, there was an air bubble. There was a valve that might have not moved properly because the thing has been at rest. We shut it down. We do another isolate start. The next time you shut it off, boom, everything is fine. And so the idea is, is what we don't want is a surprise for that first start, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'll, I'll demonstrate you an isolate start. We'll start the engine in the isolate mode. We'll get it up and running and then we'll shut it down, I'll let you do one, and then we'll go to the next to the next step. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Okay, master on, fuel on, and turn on isolate, okay? Everything looks good. I'll set this for fuel flow. Um, I'm gonna watch oil pressure in this indication, okay? Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hit the start button, I'm gonna watch this start to come up. You notice I'm doing this without headphones. Yeah, right. I want to hear what's happening, mm -hmm, okay? Mm -hmm. When this gets to seven to 10%, I'm gonna increase the fuel, we're gonna get it to light off, and we'll take it from there. Okay. Very gentle. As you can see, we're limiting the amount of fuel. N1 is staying way down. So now I'm going to go ahead and start kicking it up. ITTs are well under control. 